This is Tell Me What to Read, powered by Booktopia. I'm Nick Wasiliev, and I'm sitting down for an interview today with two people who need no introduction. Johnny Ruffo won everyone's hearts on The X Factor in 2011, and also, of course, dropping big singles on top, Take It Home, and more before having an incredible stint on Home and Away, of course. However, today we'll be talking about his incredible book, No Finish Line, which details his life and battle against brain cancer. And Johnny is joined by his longtime partner, Tani Sims. Welcome, both of you, to Tell Me What to Read. Hello. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, I think, this book. It's, it's, taken, it's, it's taken a while to write. I think Tani wrote just as much as <laughs> I did because I couldn't remember a lot of the, uh, the stories and the chronological order that they... they, they uh, they came in, so she helped me write just as much of it. Refreshed your memory. Yeah, like I can remember <laughs> oh, what happened exactly yeah. after this and what happened there. <laughs> I was going to ask, we'll, we'll kick straight into it um, because, you know, this this book is, from all the sections I've read, is just so touching and filled with so much love and so much, um, despite the, the subject matter, there's a lot of warmth to this book. There's a lot of warmth. What what prompted you to just sit down and start writing? Oh, I, I think predominantly, uh, initially, I, I wanted to write. I mean, writing music is one thing. You, you always leave a little bit of vulnerability in the song. So I've always wanted to write a book. But at any time I brought it up with a friend or a co-worker or a family member, they're always like, oh, no, you got to do that later in life, yeah. later in life when you're like 40 or 50. And then I ended up speaking to someone from the management uh, company, I suppose, that I work with, and they were like, you've done so much already. Like, there's no reason you can't do that now. You know, you did, I did X Factor, then I did yeah. Dancing with the Stars and... So on. <laughs> And so on. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. So they were like, you've, you've, and, and then there was the, you know, the bombshell of cancer. And they're like, you've already got so much to talk about. So there's no reason we can't do it now. Yeah. So then we kind of just put pen to paper, so to speak. <laughs> Type. <laughs> Fingers well, keys. Mm. Mm. Well, it's, it, I'm glad that you did. It's been such a, because it, God, you've had such an interesting couple of years um, with, with you know, your exp- you talk a lot about, you know, your experiences with fame and and the kind of the journey that you had. You mentioned at the start that Tani helped you out a lot with the writing. What was, Tani, what was the experience like of uh, putting together this book for you? Um, I mean, it was very, it was a very long process and I was purely just, the fact checker <laughs> I think <laughs> like he, he'd come with all these wild stories and I'd have to cut him down and make sure it was the truth <laughs> yeah. I like that <laughs> right. yeah yeah no I was just the um fact checker you know there was a lot of a lot of times throughout his um you know hospital stays and stuff like that that he wasn't as present or he you know can't recall as clearly as I would so that was basically my input. It was all him. <laughs> it wasn't quite all me. Yeah. She had to, I mean, you kind of nailed it there, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a, a glorified <laughs> fact checker, basically. No. <laughs> a lot of it I I would make up, not make up, sorry. Oh, no, lo- love to like, you know. <laughs> embellish. Yeah, loves to bit embellish. Bit of GST. Well. <laughs> Had a bit of GST here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you got to do it sometimes. It's and, yeah, and Tony's like, well, I don't think it quite happened like that. And I was like, well, how did it happen? I don't know. I don't. I wasn't quite. Yeah. You know, present for this. <laughs> was there was there some particular parts of the book that, <laughs> as you guys were putting it together, you were like, no way, like we we, we either we can't include this, or this is absolutely oh. ridiculous, absolutely insane, or were there moments where where Tony, you looked at at Johnny was like. No way is you're embellishing too much, and it turns out it was the absolute truth. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, I think I'm used to that from him. There's, 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 oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I think ever since I first met him, so many stories that I'm like, as if that happened to you. But it did. Everything. Everything. <laughs> He's got the most interesting stories and the most interesting life, I swear. What's what's one what's one story from the book um, that most people might look at and go, no way, like like that might catch you, kind of catch people a little bit by surprise. That you know, <laughs> um, I think probably when I woke up. Did you wake up? Oh, when I woke I up, you. and I don't know if you've read this bit, <laughs> but no, I don't think I, so woke up it was like 2 a.m or 3 a.m in the morning like in ICU yeah in ICU and there was this nurse there his name's Elliot and he is an absolute champion yeah like he's he was just awesome he was nurses are on another level I tell you what like they just go above and beyond literally Mm -hmm. and I was like I'm a shit sir to begin with yeah I don't think that's all that's like I just, I just wind people up I enjoy winding people up and just like I get that my brother myself my cousins we grew up with a big family like my mum on her side she's got nine brothers and sisters so you can imagine there's like a million and three cousins I think <laughs> I think there's or a million and two I can't quite remember <laughs> and you just yeah and we just heckle each other like that's all we do like, no, in ICU though. Oh yeah, and in ICU, I was just heckling everyone. Straight, straight. The second, out of the second brain time, surgery. the second time was worse. <laughs> the first time, I woke up, and the first thing I said to Elliot was, "Are you trying to touch my dick?" <laughs> <laughs> just for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> and then he looks at me and he's like, "No," <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like. I feel like start accusing him. I was like, but like, <laughs> oh, in a joking manner. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I do love that you're you just when you're in a situation like that. Sometimes you just the just take taking the piss out of someone and having a laugh is the best way to get through it. Yeah. Whenever you're in that situation, yeah, I le- I use humor a lot as a coping mechanism. I think <laughs> <laughs> maybe definitely, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've obviously I want to talk about because a lot of this book you talk a lot about the fight, the battle against cancer um, that you're having right now. Um, and I, I probably probably should mention because we're recording this on uh, Tuesday, August thirtieth, um, and it's been all around the news um, that you're now terminal. First of all, just how are you going in terms of that? Um. It's tough. Like just, God, it's um, just, oh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> also finding words that you know you know mm. is tough. And that's really frustrating for me. Yeah. Because I like to think that I'm somewhat of, intelligent. <laughs> a lot of brain fog. Brain mm. fog, cancer brain, brain. Chemo brain. Chemo brain. Yeah. Mm. It's a term. Uh, and I get that a lot mm. where you you just seem to forget things and you can't, uh, how was your birthday last week? <laughs> Forgot what? to get your present. No, I didn't. Sorry, I'm just joking around. Um, I don't even know what we're talking the about. News. Uh, the how, the how news, just feeling? processing that rather mm. and trying to come to terms with that was so difficult. Like I yeah. still have conversations with Tani about it now Mm. um, on the odd occasion. And I get somewhat upset about it because it's. I mean, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, it's not, it's not. Yeah. It's not a simple. Yeah. You know, it's not like take the rubbish out or anything. It's, you know, for me, it's, it's going to get me. I know that it's. I say get me. I, and it, I know that this is the thing that's going to... You don't know that. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean... what? Uh, there, is a really, there was a really good quote you mentioned, I think it was earlier earlier today, where you said that you just, as a result, you just want to fill your life with as yeah. much as possible. That's the thing. You've only got one life, right? Mm. So just live it to the fullest. Yeah. Mm. 
and and fill it with people that you love. And I just think you, you need to. I feel like we don't, we don't, we've learned to not really, you know, sweat the small things and yeah. worry about unimportant things. And we, we knew, like, you know, we cherished very small moments that, you know, in the past we probably wouldn't have even, you know, thought no. twice about kind of thing. Mm. So it's, it's definitely made us, you know, very present and we don't, we don't really look or plan for the future as much. We live very much in the now and, you know, we enjoy you know, whatever we can, as much as we can. I love that. I think it's great that you, that everything has value and everything has weight and it's something that you don't realise until the everyday is under threat. Yeah. Um, and, and and on the topic of that, kind of coming back to the book a little bit, often whenever I, you know, I chat with authors, they often say, you know, and, and you often get asked the, the stereotype question of, of what do you want the audience to to get out of your book? And, and the usual response of I was in their shoes is, well, go read the book and find out for yourself. But that's just to get a sale, though. Another <laughs> <laughs> but with with you, I, I feel like it's there's the kind of the question I like to use as an alternative or a retort back to that is, you know, what did the book writing teach you? And I feel like probably now that I'm imagining writing the book was has probably made you see some things in perspective that you might not have differently. Would that be true? Yeah, I think it was quite cathartic as well for me. Yeah. Uh, I learned quite a lot about myself as well because you have to relive certain things writing the book that you may have forgotten about or not, not necessarily have... Not remembered, but just not necessarily have you would like skimmed over thought it, not, about yeah. a lot, like yeah. times that I spent with my brother when I was younger. So like <laughs> times that I'd spend with my brother when I was younger, or times that even you and I have spent together. That are, like when we were in when we travel together, like, yeah, to just things you don't really you wouldn't. Yeah, it's just like just you'd brush over it, like you'd forget. You're like, oh, we went to New Zealand that time. Yeah, yeah, but what about that time we went to New Zealand and did this yeah. specific thing? It's like yeah. how much fun was that? Yeah. That very one thing. Yeah. When I rode all the way and you did nothing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, you have to hear this story, wait. <laughs> so it was a a canoe. A, a canoe, sorry. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Rowing and canoe is the same shit. Downstream. <laughs> oh, upstream. <laughs> yeah. Nah. So wait for it. We went canoeing. Yeah, it was like rapid canoeing. Oh, <laughs> and I was I was just taking in the scenery, like getting photos and stuff. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, she's at the back. <laughs> so I'm at the front thinking, oh, what? Literally, and it was kilometres, several kilometres. Oh, my God. If you don't. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> I know. Anyway, you rode most of the way. And then they gave us these boots, these uh wetsuit boots yeah and if you put your hand in the water it was cold like well yeah it's New Zealand cold. it was icy yeah like if this water came out of your tap you'd be stoked if you wanted to drink because it would have been cold you're like oh this is icy cold <laughs> literally story icy cold and the guy reckons I'll oh, put your feet in the water and then put the boots on it's much warmer no, it wasn't. He was, he was, he was bullshitting you, wasn't he? Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> and then I start kayaking back. I mean, we start kayaking back again, or so I thought. Yeah. And then we get like halfway back, and I'm like, "Fuck, this is hard, man. This is hard work, eh, babe?" And she's not canoeing. <laughs> Tell me you've canoed at least. Some of the way. <laughs> I look back. I'm not even kidding. I look back and she's doing nothing. I think I was taking photos or something. No, nah, because you wouldn't have risked getting your phone wet. <laughs> I, I, it was, you know what, though? It was hilarious. And that's the, the, it was so much fun. Yeah, good trip. No, I loved it. Yeah, it was good. The, actually, the, even the canoeing bit, though, I loved. Oh, yeah, because it's a memory, I guess. That's so funny. Yeah. Because I turned back and you're doing nothing. 
And then we went horse riding as well. It's nice that, like, you, you mentioned that suddenly everything just has so much more. You, you can suddenly remember so much more and everything is just filled with so much more love to it, um, which is great. I want to ask you a little bit about, you know, music, your music, if I can, as well, because, you know, you've got a, a long-held love and lifelong passion for music and music, you know, has played a huge part for you getting to where you are. Yeah. In the life of, of both of you, uh, you know, where does music sit now? Um, in that, in, 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 you know, in that orbit that it has around you. Um, for me, it's still pretty close to the top. It's some, I still write music. I'm still recording music. Uh, it's still your favorite thing. Yeah, to do, absolutely. To it, it, and... it fills me with so much joy. Mm. I recently performed at a an Italian festival. And just being on stage, I was only telling Tani the other day, like, it's the happiest that I've been yeah. in such a long time. Like, I was knackered by the end of it. Mm. I could hardly yeah. breathe. I could hardly breathe by the end of it. I just don't have the endurance yeah. that I once did have. <laughs> but I pushed through and I got through it just. Mm. And it, it just fills me with so much joy. And you can, I think the difference between performing like acting and dancing and and performing on stage singing you can like the audience the energy that you yeah. can give and receive from the audience yeah you can't get that anywhere else mm. and it's just it's something that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't swap for anything like it's Whereas, like, when you're filming a show, like when I was filming Home and Away, you can do it over and over again. You might take 10 takes at doing something. Yeah. Uh, and you just never know what the audience is going to feel. Like, you might film a scene where you're crying and you're down and out on your knees. I, I remember filming a scene where my girlfriend... <laughs> <laughs> she died from a brain aneurysm, actually, funnily wow. enough. Wow. Not funnily, I mean. Yeah. Um, and I had to, like, I was on my knees at her grave crying. Mm. And you just don't know if the audience are responding to that or not. Yeah. So you Very can't, you don't have that live bond. Yeah. Mm. Whereas with the audience, if you're singing a song, and they're seeing it with you, and you forget the lyrics. You can just throw the mic out to them. <laughs> <laughs> they can you, they can take over because they can they can sit um, right bring it home and, and give and give something back. Yeah, to you. That's, that's your favorite trick, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's my only trick. <laughs> but yeah, you can you just have that energy that you you know you can play off them and they play off you, and then you just yeah. bounce back and forth off one another. I think music in general is like. That's a big part of who you are and yeah. what you know makes you happy. Like you listen to music all day, every day. It's a universal language, yeah. you know. You don't need to. Mm. I used to listen to a lot of Serbian music. They have, I don't know if you like. You listen to Serbian music. It's weird. I don't really know much Serbian music. I mean, nobody would. Why would <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> there's music. You, you, there's like the. I think some mates of mine. They that he often talks about like Serbian keyboard music or compares it with like and yeah. and there's particular there's like styles of music that it's just it's so otherworldly but also so unbelievably creative and it inspires yeah. a lot of the you know you have some of the most high profile um bands in in you know in rap and soul and funk and they listen to these guys uh because yeah. there's just something out there that's just another level of creativity or, or a shining light of creative inspiration yeah. yeah there's this one uh Serbian artist his name is I don't know if you <laughs> his name is Jelko Joksimovic. Mm, nice <laughs> and don't ask me how to spell it because <laughs> but he he has this style of guitar at most of his intros and it's just it's phenomenal. It's yeah. like, oh, I could just sit and listen to this and nobody sing. 
for like on repeat, just on and on and like just changing the structure of it. And it's just unbelievable. It's the, it, it, you're absolutely right about it as, as a music, as a, as a great universal language, a great unifier. If only we could all speak it, uh, it would make things so much easier. <laughs> uh, I want to ask about you two. Um, Cause you, you know, you guys have written this book together and you've, you've, you're tackling this, the, you're tackling this cancer together. How has the, you know, experience affected your relationship dynamic and where you guys are going with yourself? Um, I, th- I think if anything, it's, it <laughs> would have brought us closer. I was about to say the exact yeah. Same thing. yeah. I think um, obviously we've learned to appreciate one another much more than, you know, we probably ever would have been without being thrust into this kind of, you know, scenario. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. It oh, hasn't... I, I think I agree. I mean, there's times where it's shit. Like oh, it's, of it's course. not, it's it's not shit. always yeah. I think we've definitely grown closer in a lot of areas because yeah. there's so many things about the situation that I rely on Tani for. But that it's like I don't know. It's I, if anything, it's strengthened our partnership. Bond. Yeah, and our bond. In you know, we we've, we've been together for quite some time now. And at you know, at the very start, we were quite young, and you know, we did a lot of traveling and we were, had a lot of fun and stuff like that. And then this was obviously a huge bombshell. But in a way, it has, as I mentioned before, like it's it's made us aware of you know to be present and to appreciate everything and. And it's matured us a lot. Yeah, well. it's matured us a lot. Like we we often individually and yeah, we often say all the time like how not naive, but how like eyes eyes shut. I guess we were before eyes wide shut. <laughs> yeah, before to like this kind of scenario. <laughs> like we would never have pictured ourselves in this kind of scenario. And obviously, it's not it's not ideal. It's not what anyone wants. But I think you know we've risen above it in a way, and you know strengthened our relationship and it's testing at times in not like for our relationship but it's just a lot for a couple to go through and individually as well like it's it's not something we would wish upon anyone like god no we do we often like john does share a lot but there's a lot that we also don't share of like times that have been like you know testing yeah very testing or like just scary times and stuff that we've dealt with you know in hospital visits and stuff like that but (laughs) But in saying that, I do think, you know, it has brought us, made us stronger and, you know, we we have an appreciation that we wouldn't have if we weren't put in this kind of scenario. Mm. It's it's like the, the, the shit that happens now is our shit. It's no longer, it's not a case of, you know, one person is dealing with this. It's a together yeah. thing. You, you tackle it together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Whenever I speak about cancer in, or my cancer in general I always say we like mm. Tony and I have an appointment mm. like we have an appointment or we have we changed chemo <laughs> like I always say we yeah. because we're going through it it's like you know when yeah. a couple are pregnant oh we're pregnant <laughs> well I, I feel like your wife's pregnant she has to deal with the nine months of <laughs> carrying the child and then she has to give birth to the child <laughs> You know, but I always say we. Yeah. I always say we because it's us going through it. Yeah, it is. And we both, like, we don't, we both live in Sydney, obviously. John's family is from Western Australia. My family is from Byron. So we both don't have any family around really close by anyway. Mm. So from, I guess, the get-go, it has just been me and John against, you know. The world. (laughs) I mean, the cancer. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Still good, though. So kind of as a, as a last point for this chat, um, you know, what are your hopes going forward? And obviously, like, cancer affects so many people and there are so many people who are in, you know, who are in a similar position to you um, but, you know, uh, uh, don't have the chance to be able to, to get, put the message out there and speak about this thing so openly and candidly and and honest um what message do you would you like to you know send 
to others out there who might be in a similar position to you both? For me, I, I would like to give people a little bit of hope because not everybody's cancer is terminal. But even those who do have cancer that is terminal, there is still hope. You know, grab grab life by the horns. Bull by the horns. Ah, <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, both, oh, both were right. I was with <laughs> Grab life by the horns. Yeah. Right? Hmm. And just live it. Ride the bull and until you can't ride the bull anymore. <laughs> bull being life. <laughs> okay. Just I like it for us. Like no matter what comes your way, just yeah. kick it in the face and keep going. Just keep mm. marching on. You know, just and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? You know, they might find a cure next week. Mm. We never know. Nobody knows. So until then, just keep kicking on. Stay strong and just surround yourself with people that support you. You know, I got yeah. one here. I got <laughs> I got a few, but I've I've got one incredible support. I've one person here, and I've had several others. Yeah, and you just need to surround yourself with an incredible support network. Would be my first step to creating a, a better place for yourself if you're not feeling great mm-hmm. you know I mean obviously physically you, you're probably not feeling great anyhow I feel shit most days yeah but if, if you're feeling down like you know mental health is just as important as your physical health so you need to create an environment where you know your mental health is just as important as your physical health so if you're not if you're not feeling good one day or you're down and out, call someone. Call, call one of your mates and just say, hey, you want to catch up or you want to come around and we can play uh, Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. You know, just anything. Even if you want to come and have a coffee and we can just talk shit. Yeah. Talk sports or just ride whatever it is. Ride the wave mm. with me just for a tiny little bit. Yeah. Mm. You know, just have that person there by your side for just a brief moment. Yeah. Just to carry that load for the tiniest of moments. It's a good way to it's a good way to just look at life and just in, in be in the moment a bit more. I, I want to finish with kind of a, a fun little analogy. Your your last song that you did last year, um, Let's Get Lost. You you talked a little bit about I, I can't remember where I where I I heard you say but you talked about it was about getting away yeah from everything for a while like getting away from all the crap getting away from all of the treatment getting away from the the public image and just being lost and being in the moment once all the the book press is done and and you know all the all the treatment is done where is the one place that you want to disappear to and explore together that you haven't been I don't know. There's so many. I think our um, our ideal next trip is um, driving up the coast of Western Australia. Up and down. Yeah, we want to mm. do like obviously John's from there, but we want to do that whole coastal drive in like a big camper van and just you know see it all. Oh, that's um, our ideal. <laughs> I think start start. I think we ideally. I think yeah. I just came up with an idea. <laughs> We could fly to Broome, hire a like a camper van, a camper van type yeah. deal, mm-hmm. and just drive all the way down the coast and to, to Esperance. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the pink lakes there. Mm, yes, certainly have images of them. Even yeah, I, I got family down in in Basselton, so oh, we've well, well, travelled well, down. We've well. tra- <laughs> yeah, travelled down. Been down that part of the world before, yeah. It's so nice. Beautiful there, and it's just chilled, like yeah. super chilled. Mm. So, That's and cool. I'd love to take Tani. Like I've been that far. I've been down to Margaret River, so I'd love to take Tani further north, like Geraldton, even further. I don't know if you know these places, 
and just drive all the way down and just see everything. There's like pinnacles yeah. and because we have the sun rise over here mm-hmm. and the sun sets, the sun in, the sets in the west. Yeah. yeah. So, so you haven't really experienced the... Oh, I mean, when I've been there, but not... Not to the degree not like that... Um, it... Yeah. Well, that's that's our ideal next trip. Yeah. Love it. And hopefully you'll be, uh, you'll be able to to go on it and have a fun adventure again soon and get lost again. Yeah. yeah. Which would be great. Yeah. I, could honestly, uh, I could honestly chat to you all day, but um, I'm aware that you are super busy people. Um, so, but I'll, and I'll, so I'll finish by just saying it's been, you know, it's been such an honour and a privilege chatting to you both. And it's just so awesome to see how you're taking every day. I think it's, I, I think it's awesome. And, you know, we, we wish you just all the best. And I hope that uh, whatever comes next, that your life, you guys are just filled with is, have as just as many happy days as possible. Thank you. Thank so you. That's so kind. And likewise yeah. yourself. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and for everyone listening, uh, be sure to get a copy of No Finish Line. It's uh, an absolutely awesome book. You will not regret it. It is uh, an absolutely incredible journey and you can get it right now from booktopia.com.au or from your local bookstore as well. Local bookstores. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So thank you so much for listening and never stop reading.